Good morning, everyone. Um, it's an interesting time to uh, talk about LHC results. Uh, just after LHCP and, and Morian, and when, when the beams are back. Um, but before starting, uh, does my clock start now? Because I have 70 slides and I have to do something about it. So, okay. Um, so this is the plan of my talk. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the CMS detector and, and its performance. And then uh, some SM measurements, and then mostly talk about searches, mostly from CMS. And then uh, a short conclusion, which is uh, known to everyone. So um, the task is challenging because uh, CMS so far has uh, produced more than 600 papers. Exotica topping the list, a lot of standard model results. Um, and then about 70 papers on supersymmetry and 60 on Higgs boson. There are 39 new results from Morian 2017 and more from LHCP. I will be able to talk only and similar numbers from Atlas. I'll only be able to give a very biased uh, snapshot of all these results, mostly from LHCP. Uh, status of LHC, LHC for this year has just started. Uh, first table beams were produced in May, and 145 days of physics expected. 2017 is a production year. There are some challenges to be faced towards moving to the high luminosity LHC era. We would expect about 90 femtoburn inverse in 2017 and 18. So some details here. Uh, about 64% uh, of, the, of the beam time will, uh, will go in proton-proton uh, collision physics. Let me skip the details, these details. And then uh, before going to the measurements and searches, let me give a brief overview of the CMS detector. It's a multipurpose uh, detector at LHC. Uh, the layer closest to the beam pipe is the charge particle tracker. It's an all silicon device, followed by a full crystal calorimeter with lead tungsten crystals, and then uh, a sampling hadron calorimeter for measuring energy of hadrons, and all of it inside a solenoidal magnetic field which provides four Tesla axial magnetic field in which the charge particles bend uh, and we measure their momentum. Then outside the magnet, uh, these orange uh, bits are the return yokes of the magnet which completes the magnetic field circuit. And in between, the yellow ones are our muon stations for measuring muon momentum in combination with tracker. At the heart of uh, constructing events at CMS, is the particle flow algorithm. The idea is reconstruct all stable particles in CMS detector by uh, linking responses of subdetectors and uh, photon, electron, muon, charge, and neutral hadrons. Every, everything is reconstructed as a single identified particle. And the resulting list of particles is then like particles from from an MC generator, and then you can make composite objects like jets, met, and tau. Some, uh, some plots to give you an idea about our performance. Electrons and photons, uh, we have a very high resolution and high granularity calorimeter. We have a photon identification efficiency of 90%, and a photon energy resolution of about 1% in the, in the central area, estimated from uh, Z-peak data. Jets reconstructed standard by the Antiquity uh, algorithm for, for jet, jet reconstruction with uh, distance parameter of 0 0.5. There are various flavors. Um, we achieve about 10% uh, resolution in, uh, by, by, various, uh, by various methods. And 
our, our met resolution is, uh, so this is, uh, the met resolution is also obtained from, uh, from balancing uh, the Z, ZPT uh, with, uh, with the remaining of the event. And uh, this is the X component of the transverse uh, missing momentum vector, and that's the Y component showing a 10% uh, a 10 to 30 GV of, uh, of sigma, uh, sigma, sigma EX and sigma EY missing. Then muons, we have a one to 6% relative uh, momentum resolution for PT of muon less than 100 GV and about 10% at a TV with a 1% hadron to muon fake probability. And our single muon trigger rates are better than 90%. Taos are the biggest beneficiaries of, of our reconstruction based on particle flow. Uh, there will be a full talk on Taos. So very briefly, um, we have a hadron plus strip algorithm for reconstruction of Taos, um, which collects in a cone uh, charged hadrons and uh, and photons in a, in a strip. Uh, this is because in the magnetic field, a pi zero decaying to, uh, decaying to photons and then the photons converting will spread out in the phi of the detector in the transverse direction to the beam pipe and it's, uh, the algorithm exploits that. And, uh, and the efficiency for uh, tau reconstruction that we get is uh, depending on the selection criteria, it's about 60 to, uh, it goes up to 70%. B tagging efficiency uh, reaches up to, uh, up to 90%. Now we have, uh, now we have a, this is slightly old, we have a better B tagging, uh, B tagger based on, uh, based on deep network. Uh, Okay, so that's, uh, that's briefly the performance of, of our detector. Uh, one word about the statistical tool that is core to all analysis and all following plots uh, are going to, most of the following plots are going to use this recipe. So uh, we get limits or best estimate of a parameter starting from a histogram like, uh, like this and uh, one assumes that the data in each bin of the histogram is also distributed. One constructs the likelihood of observing this data under a hypothesis which is defined by uh, background parameters and signal strength. And then uh, eventually one constructs a ratio of likelihoods uh, constructed with a fixed value of the parameter of interest and uh, with both the parameter of interest and the background parameters, the so-called nuisance parameters floating. And that's the test, test statistic that's used for obtaining every limit, uh, discovery significance, and, and the best estimates of, of signal strength. So uh, I start with a couple of results from the standard model. There are very many beautiful results I will be able to show. I just decided to show two uh, because, of, uh, because of short time. So this is uh, our Di boson updated, uh, updated result measured in a whole, uh, whole bunch of uh, channels. So uh, this the ratio here is, uh, so the number here is ratio of uh, sigma in the experiment divided by uh, sigma ex expected from the theory. And everything uh, except maybe here matches very well uh, with, with standard model and no evidence for anything anomalous here. The only other result, sorry. Um, I think this one, uh, this one combines several. I've I have to, I have to look up the, the details. Uh, so.
Okay. Uh, the other very beautiful measurement that we have is, uh, is the top uh, pair production measurement. And this is, uh, this is from early, uh, early 13 TV data. Uh, these two, the blue open box and the red open circle are the, are the 13 TV measurements from CMS and, uh, and Atlas, beautifully matches with standard model expectation. Uh, and there is an update now to, uh, to this plot, uh, which shows that the errors are, errors are reduced by, uh, by a factor of uh, almost, uh, almost two. Uh, unfortunately, that plot did not render. However, here is, uh, here is the summary of uh, TT bar, all different TT bar measurements from, uh, from CMS and, and Atlas, and uh, that's the, the dotted line um, with uh, is the is the best estimate, which is 172.5 uh, five TV, and uh, everything uh, falls around it nicely. So <clears throat> now I move on to the latest measurements from uh, from the Higgs sector. Uh, so 2012 was the year of discovery, <coughs> and then with 7 and 8 TV data, the discovery was established. The first task at 13 TV was to rediscover uh, the Higgs boson in the high-resolution uh, high channel. So this is uh, Higgs to die photon rediscovery with, uh, with early 13 TV data. This was only with 2.7 femtobarn inverse at 13 TV, and one observed a 1.7 sigma in, in this channel when 2.7 sigma was expected. And uh, that was the status last, last year uh, in the H2ZZ to four lepton channel with, uh, with a significant of two, significance of 2.5 sigma observed. And uh, these, uh, these were the fiducial cross-section measurements from uh, PP going to uh, Higgs to 4L. Now, after a year, this is what with 35.9 femtobarn inverse of data. This is how the Higgs to gamma gamma peak looks like. The analysis is similar to what was done in, uh, in run one. And And uh, there are many categories based on the based on the production mode, and uh, so so here it shows the contribution of various production modes in in our in our categories, and then one divides the analysis based on the resolution of the mass peak. And uh, for example, it shows that uh, this category, which is uh, gluon fusion going to Higgs, going to gamma gamma dominated, has, uh, has a wide resolution. This one is, is good in resolution. And then each of these categories, based on the resolution, it also depends on how much background each, each category has. So each of these categories were separately analyzed and then combined to, uh, to obtain this. And uh, so now, we observed a best fit mu value, where mu is the sigma observed divided by sigma expected from standard model of 1.16. This is uh, from, uh, this is a combination of mass there uh, from, uh, from the run one of uh, CMS and Atlas, uh, the four lepton channel, this is from CMS, and, uh, and Higgs to die photon channel, this example is from Atlas. So uh, using this profile likelihood ratio, uh, ratio based method, one finds that after combining all of run one high resolution channel, the best, best fit mass of Higgs boson lies at 125.09 
GV uh, with about uh, less than 0.2% uh, precision. And uh, the dominant sy systematic is uh, from energy and momentum scales of the final state particles, that's photons and, and leptons. And still, we are uh, statistical uncertainty dominated. Then, after seeing the signal and the, and the substantial statistics, one goes on to, uh, to estimate the fiducial cross-section and the differential cross-section. So this one is latest from, uh, from ATLAS, uh, D sigma, uh, DPT, gamma, gamma. And this is from CMS, both so showing uh, very nice agreement with data. If ATLAS has an upward fluctuation in the last spin of differential cross-section, CMS has, uh, has a slight downward fluctuation. Uh, the so fiducial cross-section is integrated uh, over, uh, so integration of this over a PT and, uh, and an eta range. So this is differential, and <clears throat> so, and that's slightly different for, uh, for CMS and, and Atlas. So um, here the green is uh, gluon gluon going to Higgs uh, plus every other thing. And the blue is, uh, blue is the other production channel. And, uh, and then yellow, uh, yellow is from another, another generator, the, the whole production. And that's the level of, uh, level of agreement. The fiducial cross-section measured by ATLAS is 43.2 uh, femtoburns, whereas expected from standard model is this. Uh, and CMS expected 75 and observed a sigma fiducial of 84 femtoburn, uh, 84 femtoburn. And uh, again, the fluctuations are on, on two different sides. Um, so, then the next uh, next important thing is to get to all the all the couplings and and signal strength. So uh, this is with the full CMS collected data of 2016. Uh, the mu values the signal strength best estimate from uh, various channels. Uh, the the gluon gluon going to Higgs has the best error. The Solid black line is uh, is the combined of all, and uh, and the red dot one is is just one that is expected. Uh, very good agreement uh, agreement there, and also uh, we have gone ahead and this is only for Higgs to gamma gamma, and there are many more. So and and then. One has done a 2D scan of the, of the likelihood uh, in, in the fermion coupling dominated channels and the vector, vector boson coupling dominated channels. The red, uh, red diamond is standard model and the black plus is, is the best fit of, of likelihood. Then uh, there are a whole bunch of, now that statistics is there, there are a whole bunch of couplings to be, uh, to be determined. Uh, for example, the gluon-gluon uh, going to Higgs would probe uh, coupling to top and bottom. Uh, the VBF will probe uh, coupling to W and Z. And uh, PT bar H would probe uh, pure uh, top coupling. And then there are subdominant channels also with, uh, with interferences. So uh, the framework uh, for a in LHC is the, is the kappa framework. The kappa is defined kappa for a, for a channel is, is defined as uh, square root of sigma observed divided by sigma SM or uh, the gamma observed, uh, the decay. Um, decay width observed, partial decay width observed, divided by uh, what is expected in, in sigma SM. And uh, these are the results from mu and, uh, for mu and sigma. Uh, one sees a nice agreement everywhere. But this one, the latest, these are uh, 
combination from all of run one analysis of, of CMS and Atlas, uh, the vector boson fusion and, uh, and the tau tau, Higgs to tau tau decay, those were established only by combining Atlas and CMS. And now tau tau in CMS alone has a, has a substantial significance. Uh, the top ones here are, uh, are the cross section ratios and the bottom ones are branching ratios. The largest deviation that one, uh, that one sees is in the cross-section ratio is about three sigma in, uh, in the TT bar H, mainly due to multi lepton channel. And in the branching ratio, the branching of PB bar to um, Z, uh, Higgs to ZZ has a, has a minus 2.5 sigma uh, deviation of the combination. Um, that's that's the grand summary of uh, coupling to uh, mu tau b w z and top uh, very nicely matching the standard model, and uh, this is the constraint uh, on uh, BSM branching to uh, Higgs, Higgs branching to BSM. So the blue dotted line is expected the 3.9 line here corresponds to a 95% confidence level in the, uh, in the log likelihood statistics. And uh, this shows, and the black line is, is the line one obtains for, uh, along with BSM branching, and the upper limit is constrained to be less than 0 0.34, whereas uh, one expects uh, it to be 0 point, less than 0 0.39 from, from standard model. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this means everything that has not been, uh, has not been measured. So, uh, and uh, so this will, this will have contributions from, uh, let's say, decays where, uh, where you have a BSM particle in the loop. Yes, I think that uh, that would still be. So you, uh, there are two assumptions you make. One is that the BSM contribution to, to the decay loops, you either set to zero or, or not set to zero. And, and then uh, this is when you, when you not set it to zero. Okay, so uh, Higgs to tau tau is, uh, is our, we have, a, we have a new result of, of Higgs to tau tau. There, uh, I will just mention the, mention the results here. Uh, I have uh, about 20, 22 minutes. Or, okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, so now uh, Higgs to tau tau, just CMS alone, has a 4.9 sigma signals uh, observed in, in various decay modes of uh, decay modes of tau, and we have also measured a uh, cup of fermion, uh, cup of vector boson, and matches very nicely. Um, Higgs to top, Yukao coupling. Uh, this was, uh, well, this, this was the status of combined Atlas and CMS at the end of uh, run one. Uh, and TT bar H was not yet observed alone with enough significance uh, by by CMS, but uh, but now so this is the this is the combination from uh, from run one, and uh, now uh, a thirteen TeV measurement from uh, from CMS actually observes the TT bar H. So this is uh, this is early CMS result from from all these channels. The the initial numbers were somewhere there was deficit, somewhere uh, somewhere there was excess. So this is where TT bar H where Higgs goes to gamma gamma. This is TT bar H where uh, Higgs goes to multi lepton, and this is lepton plus jets, di photon, and and combined. Um, a year later, uh, we have a more sophisticated analysis with. Uh, with a BDT-based analysis 
in two, uh, two distinct regions of, of the phase space, and then they're finally combined in, in one bin of signal likelihood. And uh, from that, CMS alone observed a 3.3 sigma evidence with the full, uh, full luminosity of 2016. Um, these, are, these are the uh, measurements from uh, various, various decays of the Higgs in WW star, ZZ star, and Tau Tau. And then finally, the status of Higgs to BB bar. Uh, one requires a basic TT bar selection and uh, divides the analysis in various BJ categories and then uses MVA based analysis in each signal region. The sensitivity has increased compared to run one, but uh, two sigma level is, uh, is not yet reached. So uh, these are some of the, some of the highlights. Uh, the dilepton channel, so the green is uh, statistical and uh, the black error bar is, is the total. This is from uh, the dilepton channel, this is, uh, this is single lepton and the combine uh, is, is here uh, for, the, for the mu values from, uh, from this channel. I mean, each bin here. Or like a TT bar no, this is, uh, this is a slightly, uh, slightly convoluted, uh, process, end product of a slightly convoluted process. So uh, these, this BDT and this BDT, they are based on kinematics of, uh, of two different uh, kinematic regions. And this is, uh, these are the distributions of the output of the boosted decision tree. But then uh, once you have this, let's call this BDT1 and the BDT2, then you have a two-dimensional space of BDT1 and BDT2. And various regions of this space corresponds to uh, more signal-like or, uh, or less signal-like region. Then uh, one uses a, recurse, a repeated k-means algorithm to group events in, in that two-dimensional space. And uh, these, are, uh, these are data to background expectation matches in each of those bins in, uh, in the 2D space. Yes, so, yeah, so that, is, that is the idea, that you, uh, you want to have regions in the two-dimensional BDT space where, uh, where you have each of uh, these regions more or less flat in background, but as you go to higher signal-like regions, uh, you, you see... Uh, no, it dip uh, well, uh, I do not know all of the details, but uh, it depends on how you have divided the region. And I think by construction, they, they divide the region such that they're more or less equal in background expectation, but you have, uh, you have better signal purity regions as you see from here to there. Okay, um, 15 minutes for supersymmetry and uh, other BSM. So, Okay, so uh, for SUSY searches, the general strategy of, uh, of LHC has been uh, first foc focus on strongly produced processes. And uh, so there is, a, there is a large gain in that uh, going from 8 to 13 PV. For example, here you can see the cross-section of various productions as a function of mass of this particle. Uh, the blue solid line, for example, is gluino pair production at, at 8 TV, and the dotted line is, uh, is that, for, uh, that for 13 TV with a, with a big gain. I'll have one, uh, one more uh, plot showing that. And then uh, do focus searches for stop bottom. And uh, this was the status at the end of run one. Uh, that's from IHF 2014. The, the third line is for, is for the gluino limit, which was about 1400 with the MLSP, uh, the lightest neutralino mass at zero, zero GV. Uh, so going to 13 TV, these are actual cross-section ratios for various processes. 
between 8 and, and 13 TV, and the green ones are various uh, SUSY processes, and as you can see, the gain, depending on the gluino mass in, in SUSY, can be somewhere between a factor of 45 and 2,700. And uh, then, uh, just with the beginning 2.3 femtobarn of luminosity in some channels, you could get sensitivity equal to, uh, equal to uh, the 8 TV run. And now we have uh, 10 times, uh, more than 10 times. So this was, uh, this was the beginning of the 13 TV run. Uh, the gluino limit moved up to, uh, up to about 1800 and all other limits. So the blue lines are, are for MLSP zero with, uh, with early 13 TV data of 2016. And one can see the, see the improvement. Then uh, the 2016 data saw many SUSY analysis with, uh, with usually more, uh, more complicated uh, signal regions. So this is an example. Uh, this is CMS multi-jet zero lepton, a total of 174 regions in PT and in, in a four-dimensional space of number of jets, number of jets. The, the HT, so-called, and the HT means these are scalar sum of the jet, jet transverse moments and these are uh, vector sum, magnitude of the vector sum of jet transverse momentum. And so uh, these gluino production and decay modes were considered. Uh, what one sees is more or less a flat agreement in, in data and expectation in all, all these bins. Let me skip this one. Uh, more analysis from, from the same CMS multi-jet analysis. Uh, there is one more based on the uh, MT2 uh, variable. And uh, there also one sees uh, no significant excess. So the summary of, uh, of various channels looked for is here. So for Gluino, one sees at zero, zero MLSP, one sees uh, somewhere around two TV M Gluino excluded. And uh, this, is, this is for uh, BB bar uh, final state, and this is for, this is for uh, TT bar final state in, in the decay. And then uh, for the squarks, uh, one sees about combining a different CMS analysis. Uh, one sees uh, somewhere around uh, 1,400 to 1,600. And, uh, and well, it, so this is, this, is for, this is for the light quarks, and this is for bottom, and, and this is for stop. Then uh, Atlas also has done generic square gluino search with, uh, with full data. Uh, I, will, I will skip the, skip the details. They, uh, they use the standard effective mass variable, which is essentially sum of momentum of all final state particles. But in addition, they have a new, uh, new method, which is called recursive jigsaw reconstruction, in which from the final state visible particles in a SUSY decay chain, they try to reconstruct back the rest frame of the, of the decaying uh, particles, for example, this could be two gluino, and then they uh, take the best limits from either their old uh, effective mass-based study or, uh, or this new study. Um, and I'll have to show, uh, show very quickly. Uh, this, is, this is the best of their, their two analysis. Uh, limit on, on M Gluino, they reach a very similar limit of about 2 TV. So the brown line is the, is the observed one. This is uh, the kinematic line of uh, M, M's particle equals M, M LSP. And uh, then they, uh, yeah. so these, are, uh, these are for, for two, different, uh, two different decay 
decay modes, uh, one where you have uh, charginos in between and, uh, and, and this one. So ATLAS also excludes, uh, excludes up, up to 2 TV, which is about 500 GB improvement from, uh, from 2015. This is their limit on squark mass. Uh, they exclude up to 1.6 TV in, uh, in squark mass and uh, 1.2 uh, TV in, uh, in, in this mode, uh, in, in this branching mode. So skip some of of this, there is a, maybe you can just take a look because, okay, so, let me, uh, let me show this one, uh, CMS has, has done a bottom search uh, with, uh, where, where this bottom goes to Higgs neutralino and, and B, and uh, it does Reserve variable MR and R square based uh, signal region analysis, and uh, <coughs> the as you can see, there is uh, there is nothing spectacular in in the full analysis, and uh, this is the bound on uh, on the bottom bottom mass, which is at about uh, at about 500 GB. Um, CMS also has uh, this is one example of a Higgsino search in a scenario where Gravity no, this is GMSB. Gravity no is the is the LSP, and the Higgs nos go to Higgs, and then and then gravity nos, and uh, then one looks for this channel, large MET plus uh, four four B in the final state. That's the that's the exclusion that CMS has got uh, in in Higgs no mass, and it's it's between two two hundred twenty five and seven hundred seventy GV. So the grand summary, at the end of uh, 13 TV run with 35 femtobarn inverse of luminosity, there are a whole bunch of new analysis. So the blue are the ones uh, from Morion 17 compared to ICHEP 16. And uh, you, can, you can see the gains here, no, uh, no new signature. Finally, uh, moving on to BSM searches in uh, in the remaining uh, few minutes. Um, sorry, Susie. Well, uh, Susie. Uh, yeah, you can say Susie is also exotica, but uh, that has been that has been the nomenclature standard nomenclature that non Susie BSM is, is exotica. Uh, so there's a huge number of uh, Exotica searches done both by CMS and Atlas. This was early, all the searches of early, uh, early CMS 13 TV, 13 TV data. And uh, now uh, we have eight of these analyses which are completed with, with the full luminosity. And I'll be able to talk about one or two of, uh, two of those. So, but let me start with uh, reminding you of, uh, of an excitement that was there last year. Uh, around this time last year, there was a special session in this, in this room uh, based on, based on this, uh, this plot. And uh, this was in, uh, in high mass dye photon analysis, uh, LHC saw uh, some some big dips in, in p-value of standard model likeness, so which corresponded to a 3.4 sigma local significance of some <coughs> resonant particle of about uh, decaying to decaying to dye photon. And then there were two, two hypotheses, um, and these were the plots. But then that, uh, with, a, with a little bump in excitement, it, it died down. And, but that triggered also uh, people to look into uh, Z gamma states uh, where one expected to see something. And uh, this was early 13 TV analysis in which nothing was seen, 
now we have an updated analysis following very closely the methodology of, uh, of our Higgs 2 dye photon search with a parameterized background in, uh, in the dye photon, in the Z gamma invariant mass spectrum and then looking for an excess. And uh, there are three subdivided categories of B tag jets and not B tag jets and then further categories in not, not B tag jets. But the summary is uh, nothing is seen. There is a little, in the hadronic channel, uh, there is a little excursion outside, outside two sigma at a, between two and three TV. And uh, when you combine, combine this with uh, mu plus mu minus gamma and E plus E minus gamma channel, this is what you see. Now, uh, one. So this is uh, this is not different channel. I have not shown the leptonic separately. So uh, yes. Yeah, so this is this because this is leptonic combined with uh, with the hadron. That's the that's the very good. Okay. Um, one very rich area. Yes, but I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it here. There is nothing in the uh, in the. No. No. Yes, uh, just uh, fluctuations within the green one, green and yellow one. So. Okay, uh, Dijet resonance search has been a source of very uh, very rich physics. This is. Uh, CMS resonance, this is the result from uh, full 13 TV data analysis of uh, CMS uh, digit resonance search. Uh, that's, uh, and, and these, these various lines, the dotted lines are uh, theory predictions from all, all different uh, models. And, uh, and one, one sees uh, a whole bunch of uh, exclusions from, from various models, string resonances greater than 7.7 .7 TV, scalar dye quarks 7.3 TV, um, axi-gluon 6 TV, excited quarks up to, up to 6 TV, and, and so on. Uh, w prime, Z prime excluded up to about 3 TV, and RS graviton up to, uh, up to 1.7 uh, TV. Um, but one big interest of, of this channel is, is that this is a channel uh, for, for dark matter <coughs> search also. So under the assumption of a simplified model with a, uh, with a mediator, uh, CMS with this analysis obtains a dark matter uh, mediator mass limit of Greater than 2.6 GV. This is uh, this is CMS exclusion in uh, in the uh, mediator mass and and dark matter dark matter mass uh, plane, and that's uh, for for two different scenarios of axial vector and, and vector coupling. Okay, uh, so well, I can I can more more or less stop. Uh, I'll just uh, okay. Then, uh, then CMS did a uh, Higgs plus dark matter type search also, where you consider two different models. Uh, one is uh, some heavy uh, vector mediator uh, going to going to Higgs, and and then chi chi bar dark matter pair, or and uh, then another one where you. Where you have a Higgs trilung from the from the heavy mediator and the dark matter pair, one looks for excess in uh, in the missing moment, missing transverse momentum spectrum, and the Higgs is tagged by its di photon decay, and uh, nothing nothing observed there. 
then uh, the most uh, significant uh, dark matter star channel at LHC is the is a monojet channel where you have a ISR ISR jet recoiling against dark matter pair produced. You can interpret it in contact interaction or a or a simple mediator model. Um, and the same analysis can also be used for putting bounds on, on LED gravitons because you can get, get a monojet plus, uh, plus met uh, via, via these processes. So um, this is, and now CMS, uh, in its full 13 TV analysis, CMS has added, a, added one, more, one more interpretation where you have, uh, where you have a dark matter product production through, uh, through a fermion portal model. This would be uh, an intermediate Majorana or Dirac fermion uh, giving these, these additional diagrams. Uh, this is what CMS, uh, that's a typical monojet event, and this is from a lower energy run. And this is what CMS sees in the transverse missing energy spectrum, a perfect agreement with data. Uh, up to up to 1400 GV. Uh, therefore, one goes out and sets limit. Since uh, my time is up, there will be another talk which will show all of these in detail. Um, just <clears throat> in uh, so this is these are exclusions in uh, well these are exclusions on the chi nucleon scattering. Translating from from the S channel production as a function of uh, MDM, so exclusions in chi nucleon scattering cross section and uh, and dark matter mass plane, and this is how we do. Uh, so this is this is the CMS line, and these are the best performing direct search lines. And CMS also does a pseudo scalar mediator. For that, it's not possible to have uh, comparison with direct direct searches, but, but it's compared with army lab, which is, which is the free line. Um, so there are other bounds from Monojet. Let me skip those. And uh, let, me, let me just stop with this one slide. Uh, monophoton is the uh, smaller brother of, uh, of the Monojet channel. Uh, it also has various interpretations. Uh, Atlas. The CMS still doesn't have a full 13 TV analysis. It's soon to come. These, this, these are results from, again, the dark matter, uh, dark matter interpretation results from, from the Atlas full, uh, full data monophoton analysis and exclusions in, uh, in the mediator mass, dark matter mass. Okay. That's, uh, that's about all I had, and uh, that's the that's the conclusion. Uh, essentially, uh, we have Higgs plus no new physics so far, and looking forward to 2017-18 data. Thanks.